Ignite, ignite, ignite. with another episode of Move Your Feet. We've been looking at the three frames of movement prep. Our opinion of what we tell our clients are really great frames of reference to know that they're getting ready for a really great training session. In episode one, we covered activation. In episode two, we covered engagement. And in this final episode, episode number three, we're covering ignition. We're going to be talking about igniting the neuromuscular system. So as Coach Matt comes in, we've been using a little bit of a reference here. The first phase, the activation phase, actually was where he got in the car, he turned the key, and he started the engine. Vroom, vroom. The second frame of movement prep for reference was he's pulling up to the line and getting ready for the race. That was engagement. Today we're going to talk about number three, frame number three. That's ignition, where he starts to step on the gas, actually for right foot, and hold the brake back a little bit as he's getting the RPMs up so he can eventually take off for the race. So we're going to cover ignition today. So man, you can take that out of the frame and you can actually step off frame and turn off that very noisy air purifier over there. So as Matt goes and does that, we're going to be talking about ignition today. We're talking about prepping the neuromuscular system. So come on back in, Matt. What's the difference between engagement and ignition? Well, now we're going to start to incorporate some compound movements with dynamic movement and multi-planar movement. And we're really going to try to pair it up with the training session you're writing. Hopefully those movements will complement what you're going to be doing during that training session. So it's going to be compound or dynamic, multi-planar, it's going to be moderate resistance with moderate speed or light resistance with higher speeds. We're trying to get the biomechanics, the ranges, and the speed all in sync synchronized for the eventual race of training. So we figured uh, you could go back, see episode number one of the three frames of movement prep, which is activation, episode number two, which was engagement, and then today we'll kind of bring an understanding together and then we'll answer any email, we might need to do a fourth. But we're gonna give you a couple of examples of exactly what is ignition. And I think we started needing to explain ignition when it came to people saying, well, you know, how do I go from walking through the door to getting up to speed? Most everybody understands, like with the engagement phase, which was the previous phase, that's sort of your dynamic warm-up falls in there also, because that's no or low resistance with dynamic movement at moderate speed that you're skipping or whatnot. But then there's between that and how am I going to get prepped for some of maybe the crazy stuff I'm going to do in a training session? So the first example we're going to give you, and Matt's going to do this facing the camera, and then he'll give you a sagittal view, is we're going to do tsunami clean to press out to overhead press. Hopefully Gorilla Boy won't knock the collars off the bar while he's demoing this. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to step back a little bit. But basically Matt's going to go down and perform what is a clean press out to overhead press or snap, go. Nice. Spin, give him a sagittal view. Did you have to turn my way? Go ahead, give him a shot, Matt. Good flat back, chin down. He goes. So as you can see, you've you got all the planes of movement fairly well covered on that movement. That's pretty good speed there also, which we love because you know, if you know anything about us, we really love our velocity-based training. Back in the day, we just used to call it speed lifting, but you know what? It's all good. So another uh, another real uh, ignition movement that we use in the frame of ignition is we just use a simple lateral stepping tsunami overhead press. You could use a, a dumbbell. Um, what we don't really like about the dumbbells is that most of the time when people are stepping, they're not taking the dumbbell with them. They're actually kind of you know pushing it out here, Maddie. They're getting out in that slot. So 
The reason we use the Tsunami bar is it's flexible, it's safer than a regular barbell, and you can do it at speed. So Maddie's going to show you how he keeps good power pillar, doesn't bring his feet together, and let's start on this side of the frame, Matt, so you can give him a look going that way, and then back. Ready? And begin. So he's pushing and pressing, opposite way. Good. And back. And rest. Good. Now, also, you can call that, which is kind of cool. You can still remain engaged, <laughs> no pun intended, during the ignition phase with the client and say, look, left, right, it gets them attentive. You start to get them aware. You can actually have reaction built into that actual ignition phase. But now we're talking about more so getting prepped and ready to get up to full throttle and train. And, you know, we can basically use anything. Why don't we grab one of the 25 pound things back there? This is going to be an example of moderate resistance with moderate speed. So it's just a rotational movement. And with the plate, you know, you could use 25, you could use less, we probably should use less. Why don't you strip one of those off the bar while I'm talking? And we're going to get a bit of a rotational element, and we're also going to cut back through our planes where we're just taking a plate and we're basically trying like we're going to throw a discus or we're going to throw a frisbee more so, finger over finger. And as I go to do that, I'm stepping back and stepping back. And if I want, I can actually step back and move into it. Step back and move into it. It's a little bit more mundane, but it is considered an ignition. Matt, you can step up and have him see what that looks like with a lighter weight. And he's going to have his hands turned over. Let's go top hand. Flip your hands, fingers up, like this. Go this way. Okay, we'll go back to that in a second. I'm just showing that step back movement. Good. Boom. That might even fall into an activation because he's more static. But because he has the rotational element and he has the moderate resistance, it now gets into that frame of ignition. Now you can go underhand. Show him what the underhand look looks like. And go ahead, give him a shot. And what happens? Anything different on that mat when you go underhand versus overhand? Not really, right? <laughs> it's just going to basically help someone to move a little bit better. You'll see that some people prefer overhand, some people prefer underhand. Depends how their AC joints rotate is what it really boils down to. Now, Matt, let's put that into movement and motion here. So we're just going to try to get one of these, and you're going to start back here. And you would instruct someone to say, hey, look, you're going to rotate left while you step right. Rotate left, step right. Show them what a young, stubby guy looks like while he's doing that. Good. And rest. Good. So you're seeing he has trunk control. He's not flexing laterally, left or right. He's getting great trunk engagement. He's getting great trunk stability on that. And it's a really nice one. As you can see, we never prep or tell Maddie what's coming up. That's why we like to do these things very impromptu and be very transparent with you guys about this. So once again, this was the ignition phase. Previous to the ignition phase, you had the engagement phase. Previous to the engagement phase, you had the activation phase. Please go back. Please check out the chronology of these three frames of movement prep. It's our opinion. We may not be right, but we love to give our clients and athletes frames to refer to when they come in. Hey, did you activate? Yeah, I activated. Okay, did you engage? Yeah, I engaged. Okay, cool. Come on down. Let's get prepped up for ignition. And quite honestly, the ignition phase takes a little bit more coaching and supervision than the previous two frames of movement prep. So, until next time, Coach Massey here saying greatness is for, is not fabricated, that's your day.